Hello everybody, it's Matthew Reinhardt, Professor Matthew Reinhardt here, and it's yet another uh, pop-up masterclass. I'm sorry I've taken so long to, to update things lately and, and make more videos. I'm under bad, bad deadlines. They're the worst. And I was working on two books, and I'm still actually sort of working on them now. Uh, one of which is coming out this fall. Um, well, both actually are coming out this fall. One is Nightmare Before Christmas, the 20th anniversary, and it's, um, I think it's pretty awesome. And then the other one I'm working on is Harry Potter. I, yeah, I've actually got my Harry Potter glasses on right now. Um, I'm doing a guide to Hogwarts. I'm gonna give everybody sneak peeks of all this stuff um, in the future, but right now, today, we are going to actually make a mechanism for a pull tab. Um, in fact, this pop-up right here actually inspired me um, to uh, show you guys something a little bit different than what we usually learn. This is gonna be an opposite action pull tab. So we're gonna pull it one way, but the action's gonna happen the opposite way. For the next few uh, classes, we're gonna learn more and more about pull tabs because I think they're a lot of fun. When I use a pull tab, typically what I'll do is I'll use it on a mechanism. So I'll have like a 3D thing and then something moves on it. And let me see, let me see if I can go to my little library. Now let's go into Frozen here. This book has actually a lot of pull tabs in them and they're very simple. As you can see, there's one over there and there's a nice action going on. So it's, it's almost like I've taken the page, had it pop up and then had these typically pull tabs. I just like the idea of something three dimensional changing. This is kind of a big pull tab. It's actually, it's almost a pop up without a, a cover, a page. Uh, so that you have the action of making it move and change. And again, there are pull tabs that transform the robots and they're on 3D, but, it's, but you can look at it as though it's just a page raised up. And then there's like super complicated things like Optimus Prime here. We're not gonna learn this one today. This took forever to build and design. Oh, there's Optimus, oh, look at that. He's all like, freedom is the right of all sentient beings. This is a book that has a sm very, very simple pull tab action. All right? He's all like, bam, 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 I don't like you. I don't like you at all, Captain America. And Captain America's all like, hey, Thor, talk to the shield because the face ain't listening. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If we look up here, you can actually see, see that layer underneath there pulling? It's really, really simple. But it's just, it's very effective. And I, quite frankly, I think it's really fun. And let's look at, let's look at Thor. You can actually see it underneath there. See that movement? There's that layer. This layer goes underneath the surface and comes back out. Today's lesson is gonna be about what kind of movement you can get from a pull tab, whether the pull tab is above or below. When we have an opposite action, it goes below the page and goes back up. And the reason why I think that it works really well is because it's raised up off the page so it's nice and loose. Some pop-up books have it so that they're underneath the page and see they can move, but it has to be, there has to be a degree of looseness. So let's go into building some pull tabs. All right, let's get started. Let's just make a pull tab on a piece of cardstock. I'm gonna start out with uh, a white piece of paper as our base page. And then I'm gonna make a pull tab from another piece of paper that's in color. I'm just gonna put it in the center of the page for now. And I'm going to make some marks here, something like this. We're going to make a slot. Right, so this is a slit, see? There's not, it's not like a rectangle. It doesn't have any um, height or whatever. Whereas this is a slot. So we need to make a slot. So what I did is I just made some little boxes to show how wide our our um, pull tab is gonna be. And I made it a little wider. All right, I'm gonna cut it out. Maybe what I'll do is I'll use some scissors. I'm gonna use some really sharp scissors. And I'm um, just gonna poke. And then, here we go, we made our little slot. We're gonna pull our tab going this way, like that way, but the action that's happening up here is gonna go that way. So um, let's see, we want it to go under because that's how it worked. Remember those 
hook, it needs to go under the page. And what we're gonna do is actually have it come back out. And I think that since we have to go out and under, we need to make a second slot. You're gonna need to make sure that it's nice and straight going, sit, you know, perpendicular. Use one of my favorite measuring tools. Another piece of card stuff. Yes, that's right. This can be a measuring tool. We know that this is a right angle. This is 90 degrees for sure. We know that these cuts are pretty much perfect. So we can use that to guide us to make a line that is perpendicular to where our tab should be. So let's just make a line going straight down. We need to also, I just want to remind, remind everybody too, this needs to, this part needs to be loose. We need, we need some, uh, we need, we need a degree of looseness so that this will move easier. If you have a tight slot for a pull tab, it's going to be tougher for you to pull it. All right, so let's line up that straight edge right there. See that? That looks great. And what we're gonna do is make another slot. That's gonna be the bottom part of the slot. Let's see, where's our piece of paper that we use? My, my cheap ruler, right? We're going to use that to make that one. All right, so where's our front? This is the front, right? We're gonna snake our pull tab in. And once we fold it, we're, it's gonna come back out again. Because when we pull this, we want action happening on the front of the page, even though we know it's gonna be happening in the back of the page. And I think that we should, if the pull tab is here, we wanna make sure, we're gonna make a fold in this pull tab Let's make sure it's like a little bit above our slot. Anyways, this is where the fold is. And we're gonna snake in, this is the front of our page. We're gonna snake our tab through the page, turn it over, push it back out through the front. We are gonna make, this is going to be a, a pretty much just a simple layer. The way a, the way a layer works is if, if one thing pulls, like this, if you have one layer, it pulls the other layer, which is right here. But if there's a surface and you have the um, top layer, the puller, going through a surface like this, it's gonna pull, but the, but the way it's attached on the bottom is gonna pull another, the opposite way. So that's what we're kind of doing. So we have it lined up. We gotta make sure that this is parallel to this line that we have here. We're going to take some one-sided tape here tape it into place you can see I've got about I don't know like a half an inch between there and this is taped to the top of that slit and we're gonna make sure we're just gonna push it back and forth before you see the bottom see it's just a layer it's being pulled but when we look at the front it moves that way how about that and the reason is it's going through the surface of the page. And it's a surprise. Like, you'd think if you pulled it this way, the thing would move that way, but it doesn't. It moves the opposite way. I made a mistake. Look at, like, it's like, I've got to have little dainty teeny fingers to get under there. That's not good. I'm going to make a higher slot. I love a good mistake. I can, I'm learning something new. All right, now see, look at that. Our tab's a little bit easier to grip now. I'm gonna make a slit going through the page and have the pull tab moving in, um, in the same direction as this. So let's just pull this up, get this out of the way. Oh, I have no idea what I'm gonna turn this into. But, we're, oh, we're gonna keep it moving like this, but going to take and make another little rectangle so there that'll fit and I'm going to use a little double-sided tape and I'm going to slide it through the slot make sure it's sticky side going down because it's actually going to tape to this on the inside Let's see here. I'm going to put it like 
right like that. So it's taping, let's show you from the side. See what this, see from the side, it's taping down right there. So now let's pull these things and see what happens. Whoa, they're going in different directions. I like that because you know what it looks like to me? It looks like a character, like, it looks like a puppet almost. You could make a puppet. Like, hey, everybody, what's going on? I'm totally cool. So what we're gonna do is, I think we're gonna make a layer on top of this. And does everyone remember what a layer is? You better. It was one of our first lessons. I'm just gonna make a rectangle. Kind of like that. And um, I, I, I am going to measure. The layer has to be the same on two of the sides. So let's make sure. And do that right there. So now I know where to fold it. And you can just fold it by hand. So we can see that this distance from here to here is equal to this distance. And where that fold is from there to there. We're going to attach it like that. Let's look at it from the side. So it's going to be kind of like that. I'm going to use some one-sided tape. This isn't the, the side that has the, is the same size as this one, no. It's the other edge. Tape it there to the top of that moving tab. Turn it over. We're gonna tape it down to the top of the surface of our, our page. Let's see what happens when we pull the tab. Whoa! So this surface, this flat surface, is going that way. I'm just gonna put an arrow on it just to show. And then this one is going up. Let's look at it from the side, look. I think I'm gonna do the same thing as I did here over here. So I'm just gonna cut another rectangle around that size. We're gonna make another rectangle with a fold just like this. So I'll lay this on the top. And I'll just find where that fold is. That's pretty good. And you're thinking to yourself, hey, uh, professor, where are you gonna attach this? Well, I'm gonna attach it to the top of this here. Just like we did before. I used a piece of uh, one-sided tape. Attach it to here, the edge like that. Make sure it's all good and flat. Tape it down to the base page. Okay, so let's see what happens. So uh, I did this upper pit, uh, upper, and it was a you saw the layer come through. Let's see what happens when we do we attach the same thing to both edges. What happens? Let's see. What? What is that? That is not what I expected, is it? Well, look at that. So this is the layer side that we attach to this, and this side kind of turns into a triangle. It's weird, but you want, to, you want me to be honest with you? I think it's kind of cool. But we, the main thing, the main um, thing that I'm trying to teach here is the opposite action pull tab. And that's what we've got right here. There's that opposite action. We're pulling this way, but the action of the top, the main pull tab is going that way. Watch, so let, let's look at it. From, from the side and see the under. See how it is right there? We pull. So we're pulling this way. It goes through the surface and it goes the opposite way. We're gonna pull the tab all the way. See how it goes flat? And we're gonna use this little, little sort of band of paper. We're gonna stick it through here. We're gonna tape it to the outer side just to keep it down and in place. And I'm taping way over here and way over here, out of the way of our pull tab mechanism, so that we're actually, what we're doing, we're kind of just mimicking what a, a slot does, but we're just built, making it on the page. That way, we're keeping that piece a little tighter to the page. So now it works a little nicer. Look at how nice that works from the side. Nice and clean. So we're gonna take one other piece of cardstock, and we're gonna cover up what happens on the back. Only we're not going to tape it down tight on all the sides. I think we should tape it down maybe, hmm, let's see. Make sure it's able to move some. Let's tape it down a little on the sides. Don't go nuts with your one-sided tape. 
and do every corner. I'm just gonna do a couple edges. One here, a little here. Maybe some here. And here. All right, so it still has, watch when we open and close it. It still kind of raises up, like, let's look at it from this way. There's still a little breathing room for our pull tab to move and for our layer underneath the page Check it out. to move, all right? So now let's see how that works. That works really cool. Let's dress this up, because I see a puppet. We can make like a pop-up puppet out of this. Hey, Barry, what's going on? All right, I think I know what I want to make with this. Everybody knows, I hope, if you don't, you're crazy. You don't know me very well. I am really a big fan of Star Wars. Can you believe it? And um, it was just Toy Fair this last week. And one of the big announcements was that you could, there's a, like I collect Star Wars figures and you, they're now going to have a crowdfunded Jabba's sail barge toy. And they never have, you know, remember from Return of the Jedi, Jabba the Hutt, this is gonna be a Jabba the Hutt thing. He had this cool big spit, uh, like it was, it was like a, a cruise ship in the desert, it was so cool. I mean, yeah, sure, it blew up and killed him, but it was so cool. I love, like, I love pull tabs in books because it, it, it gives the reader the power to make things move. I mean, yeah, you can do it with, the, with moving the pages, but there is something really fun about pulling it and, you know, making an action happen over and over again. I love that. So that's our opposite action pull tab. Oh, oh, oh. And we actually built layers on, remember? We built those weird layers like the triangle one on the bottom and the rectangle one on the top. So that is an opposite action pull tab with a little bit of extra accessories that we've, we've built. Um, oh God, I really like this one. Oh yeah, me too. Totally great. So, um, and you see it do it real slow. Totally great. <laughs> All right, everyone. Um, thank you for, for coming to class this week. Uh, again, I apologize for taking so very long to come back, but I promise you that we'll have many, many more coming um, almost every week. So uh, keep on commenting and, and let me know what you want to see because I want to make, or at least I want to make with you the things um, that you asked for. Alrighty, so see you next class.